Ladies and gentlemen, uh, let me uh, welcome you to this conference. Uh, as we start, I would uh, really like to thank our hosts and the nice words that we had in the uh, of welcome that we just heard. I would like to thank in particular the team of Tsobro who organized this event, uh, uh, Professor Tkacik, uh, 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 Professor Zhakowska, and also Greg Ganchevsky, who must be running somewhere around, probably still arranging something. Um, I would like to uh, thank <coughs> all of those that were involved in the preparation, but also I would like to thank all of you that decided to come here, many from uh, distant places or from relatively far away places. Some of you not, not possibly from so far, but it might have taken you a very long time to get here. I, I heard of our Italian colleagues traveling for hours and hours, but they finally made it. So, welcome. Uh, I think we have a, an interesting conference uh, that will take place today and tomorrow. The program should, uh, I think, highlight many different aspects of the topics that we're uh, discussing, particularly how to make plastics more sustainable and how to use these new types of polymers, new plastics, how to bring them to life. This brings me to um, the basic motivation for our project. Um, our project idea started, I think, in 2009. I was just thinking about it today. I think I had discussions with Professor Kovalchuk uh, about it. And what we noticed is that in our region, science about polymers and also bioplastics, biodegradable polymers, bio-based plastics is pretty strong. But we were missing the application of these materials. Particularly when we looked at, at uh, other regions, let's say Western Europe, where we could see uh, the application moving and the commercialization moving faster. <coughs> so this was a ba basic motivation for us to start working on this project, just to bring it back. If I look at our project, I, I normally try to explain it just by using our very difficult or long uh, full name. It's Plastice, or at least that's how we call it. There's still a discussion how we should pronounce this, but we have a very long uh, full name. Innovative Value Chain Development for Sustainable Plastics in Central Europe. Um, we don't use it very often, but I think it really tells a lot. There are se several uh, emphases in it that I'd like to um, just bring out and say something about. Here we have value chain. That is something that we're trying to address. The complete value chain going from, from production to waste management. Everything in between. What is What we've noticed and uh, what we're trying to address is uh, issues that come up all through the value chain. The producers have low production quantities. The processors are dealing with new materials they're not used to. It's difficult to get good information about it, about the availability. It's perhaps more costly. When it comes to the retailers or, let's say, consumers and users, they're not quite sure should they go into it because is there a market? They're paying possibly more and complicating their life with these materials. Is there an advantage? Then we come to the general public. It's meeting these materials. What are they? Are they really biodegradable? Are they really <coughs> something else? Are they just normal plastic? Because they certainly look like normal plastic. When you go to the waste management, what should waste management do with these materials? Are they just uh, creating problems in the processing? Uh, does it bring a benefit? So there are actually issues and barriers at each step of the value chain. And that's what we try to address by bringing the whole value chain together as well. Sustainable plastics. Some people say um, that's, that's an oxymoron. That doesn't exist. No sustainable plastics. Now, 
uh, I don't take sustainability as uh, something you know that's digital. You have it or you don't have it. It's it's more like nirvana. Let's say we're trying to reach it, and we're on our route to it. Uh, you can be slightly more sustainable, and you can strive to be completely sustainable. Uh, for sustainable plastics, I think we can look at uh, you know, recycled plastics, uh, all sorts of improvements to make the use of plastics more sustainable. But within our project, we pretty much uh, focused on biodegradable and biobased plastics. Why? Because these are new materials that really need support and have great potential to influence the uh, effects of plastics. Central Europe, I think uh, I explained it uh, already. Central Europe was lagging behind, or is still, I believe, lagging behind in the use of these materials. Uh, well, we have good science. Uh, the partners in this project, I think we have uh, their locations mar marked on this map over here. Let me see how this works. You see a, a crest going across from Italy to where we are right now in Warsaw and Poland. So we have partners from Italy, Poland, Slovakia, Slovenia. This certainly isn't the entire Central Europe, but um, it's, it's one part we can't bring everybody in, although we're trying. And the last part of this name is innovative development. Innovative development pretty much brings together the scientific support that we have in this project. Uh, if we look at it in a different way, here's the value chain from producer. We have a producer, we have processors, users, a retailer, uh, waste management or a company that does, that's involved in waste management. Then we have specialized uh, uh, organizations, for example, like Zobro, specializing in packaging. And we have a basis of, let's say, knowledge organizations institutes, universities uh, from all of these countries that give scientifically verified support to the activities. So that's how we put this uh, whole thing together. Structure is pretty much as, as normal as uh, management and communication, uh, the more applied development of a roadmap for action from science to innovation and preparing new framework conditions for stimulating market demand. I'm not going to go into detail of that, but would rather go to the objectives. What are our objectives? Well, I can, I can name a few. One, certainly, is raising awareness. This is an important objective for us, and we're targeting pretty much all groups that we can reach. We're trying to explain what bioplastics are, how they can be used, and of course this message has to be prepared for the target group we're going after. Is it industry? Is it um, um, non-governmental organizations? Uh, is it the educators? We're doing that. Anybody we can catch, really, we try to get to. Another point is improving technology transfer and knowledge exchange mechanisms to the end user industries. We're trying to bring bioplastics to life, to commercial life. That's what we're really striving for. And in part of that, as well, to improve access to scientific knowledge. We understand these are new materials. Uh, people that attempt to use them sooner or later get to some problems and they need help. And we have help in the region and we're trying to organize and make it easier to access this help that exists in many institutions in the region. We're also, or perhaps just to sum it together, intensifying the application-oriented cooperation between research and industry. That's, that's our main point. I would like to specify some results that we're uh, getting to right now. This project has been going on for two and a half years, so we have uh, some results already that we can show that I think we can be quite proud of. One, uh, let me just grab it. One is a, a handbook that you, I think, all received. It's a, a 
what we call Joint Transnational Advisory Scheme, Bioplastics, Opportunity for the Future. I personally really stand behind this uh, title. I think this is an opportunity for the future. Um, this is a, a general handbook uh, that gives the information to get users interested. They're probably interested already if they pick it up, but, but to deepen it and to get them started into bioplastic. At the moment, it's uh, available in English and Polish, uh, but will be prepared also in other project languages. If, of course, we get uh, partners, can go into other languages as well. Another result that we have is the roadmap for joint R&D scheme. This, at the moment, is uh, finalized, but it's in, in an e-version, so uh, all our publications are available on our site, on our project site. Um, the joint R&D scheme uh, deals with, with the scientific and research support that can be offered to companies going into commercialization of bioplastics. Uh, the scheme has uh, two parts. We have the um, R&D scheme where we uh, list the support that can be given from the scientific institutes, what can be done, uh, where companies can get the contacts, and so on. And the other part are nine case studies. Uh, we did nine case studies within the last uh, few years. And these are all, I believe, uh, application-oriented. Um, in nine case studies, I think we had at least nine companies involved, one in, at least one in each case study. Um, these will be, some of these will be presented. I can mention the uh, pr presentations in the next few days, or today and tomorrow, by Ms. Uh, Musiol, Andrei Zabret, Mitya Mori, Irina Vojvodina, and uh, Dusan Bakos. You will see them later on. Uh, as well as we have posters for all our case studies uh, on the side of the r room. So you can, you're invited to look at them later. Um, what we try to do with these case studies is not actually to, to produce a product, but rather to test the implementation of bioplastics and to record how this is done, what kind of issues arise, and how we can possibly solve them. Why are we trying to do this? Because companies or representatives of companies can relatively quickly understand what bioplastics are, what potentially they could offer, but it's all very abstract. How does it perform when you want to buy it, when you want to put it into a machine, when you make a product, does it just disintegrate? Or I don't know what. There, there are many, many questions that, that are very practical very quickly. It's not abstract anymore. And that's what we try to, at least in part, illustrate in our case studies. An important result that we haven't reached yet is also to establish a certification system for bioplastics in Slovenia and Slovakia. We're following the example of Poland, in particular the example of the certification system uh, as it is implemented here in Sobro in collaboration with Din Certko. Uh, the German or European certification organization. Um, we, I, I'm sure that we will have this available in 2014. What is this? This is in <coughs> fact a certification portal. It's an organization that uh, users interested in certifying their products can approach in their own country in their own language, they get guidance there, and that's the interface that we have between the user, the local producer user, and the German certification organization. So what they will get ultimately out of it is a uh, DIN Certko certificate for products. And I hope you understand that uh, products are certified. That's every product and wants to have, let's say, the seedling logo has to be certified. We think this is important. I'm sorry to say, let's say in Slovenia, we do not have one single product that is certified as compostable. And I hope we make the difference uh, by also doing this. 
Another result that I think is, is probably going to go the farthest uh, is the national information points. National information points are national points that can provide information, guidance, and assistance uh, concerning bioplastics. Of course, within the project uh, countries, uh, we have these established, but we also have uh, ambitions to go further. And why not? Because the thinking within the project was once we have the basic setup, the documentation, the me methodology, the form, this can be easily replicated in today's era of internet and electronic media. So uh, this is the, this is the, okay, this is the uh, uh, site address for the national information points, sustainableplastics.eu. This is how it looks. Once you get there, this is the entry uh, page. You can click on either of the flags and it'll take you to the national point. We have the uh, project uh, connections here, but you can see also we have some more. We have Romania, Serbia, and of course we have the English version. How did these get here? Well, through this replication uh, approach, because we started looking, well, we can replicate it within EU member states. We can replicate it with countries that are aspiring to be EU members, but we can also go further. And I, and I hope this, this will actually start a story that we can report on in the future as well, also when the project is over. Dissemination is uh, really a strong point of this uh, project because what we notice is that there is a severe need for information. Almost at every step, you find a need for information. People are not sure, they need to know, they don't know, they would like to know, but they, they don't know where to get the information. So we're, we're going through a whole list of possibilities, brochures, events, lectures, publications. We have a Facebook site or, or channel. We have a YouTube channel with uh, lectures, and I think also today's lectures will be filmed and put on. This is how it looks. We had, the, for example, the uh, welcome address given by the European Commissioner at one of our events on bio-based plastics and biorefineries. Uh, these are some of our brochures, this one for teachers, this one prepared by uh, our colleagues in Italy about the uh, instruments for achieving sustainability. So you're really welcome to explore these. If you can't find them or anything, just contact us. We're using pretty much all means, and I'm, just to illustrate that, we're getting ready to have a premiere of the movie Trashed uh, on the 21st of October in, in Slovenia. You can see our, our logo down here. Uh, we're involved with a premiere of a movie. We're somehow going into the movie industry, obviously, right now. It's a, it's a phase, I think. We have a premiere of a, of a Slovenian movie that was prepared on the topic of uh, plastic waste. Uh, it'll be on the 7th of October. Um, so anything that we can get our hands on and it helps our cause, actually we grab and then we run with it and try to do the most with it. Um, but not, there, not only that there is a need for information, also there is a need for speed, I would say. I'm, I'm very impatient, really. I would like to see things happen, happen possibly yesterday. But this is, in fact, a process that needs time. Once you want to get bioplastics into use, these are important decisions, particularly for companies. You need investments, you need to explore, prepare, develop markets, but of course the, the results, if you get to them, and when you get to them are nice. You get growth, you get raised competitiveness, jobs, and of course you make some money as well. But this does not come very quickly. So just very recently when I was thinking about our project and what we've done in the two years and a half, I, I really came up with the idea that, well, it's like sitting on a, on a huge tanker. It's, it's going, and I think we're, we're turning the wheel but the tanker seems to still be going in the same direction. So to move a large ship takes time, and I think we've, we've at least helped to turn the wheel, 
And this ship, in fact, is already turning, although it looks as if it's going straight. So that's my true belief. I think it's turning. We're helping. And thank you all for being on board. And with that, I would stop. Thank you for your attention. Thank you.